This is smithy.tv. I'm Jeremy Lalonde, and tonight my guest is director Sarah St. Ange. I said it right, right? Yeah, Sarah St. Ange. Or if you're really French, like Saint Ange. Saint Ange? Yeah. Do they just put them together? If really botches, it'll be like, it's Saint Ange. Saint Ange. Yeah. Like, and then it goes be together. Like, What's the worst way you've ever heard it pronounced? Well, my nickname is actually Stongy. Stongy? Because people are like, what? Stongy. Do you ever get someone to say Ong? No, but I've gotten like, like Saint Orange. <laughs> Saint Orange? <laughs> well, I grew up in, like, I spent most of my time in the States, and they were like, what is this name? Like, they just, they didn't, they didn't get it at all. Here, people are at least a little bit predisposed to understanding the structure of the name. Yeah. Because you went to design school first, right? I did. Well, I grew up, I, I moved to Seattle when I was about 11. By yourself? That's hard. No, nah, I was like, what? I'm going to just... I want to just wear plaid. I'm just going to be a roadie for Nirvana. And like... That was a bad joke. I didn't realize it. Bonnie, who is from Seattle, is wearing plaid right now. That was a oh, terrible. I'm so sorry. Great joke. Go to the Bonnie cam. No, no show, worries, no. because plaid and grunge are like so way in right now. I know because I'm doing like I'm doing research for a That's celebrity something. swag show, so I know all about what's in. It's, grunge is back. Grunge is back. Although I don't know, I feel like it's back every two years. So it, it doesn't. It doesn't really go away. You know, like if it's if it's only been two years, has it really been enough time? I think it is. No, it's For a new here. trend. Like, it's not a new trend. It's just been a consistent trend. So you're, you're just hip. Look at that. <laughs> so anyway, back to design. You, you yeah, Seattle so, designing school. So, no, I went to... Well, at first I went to middle school. And then I went to high school. And then right. I went to... Well, and then I just, like, fucked around for a long time. And then I went to design school. <laughs> and why design school? What was the impetus? Well, at at that to, point, you wanted to be well, a designer, even, I guess. I mean, no. I mean, it was art and design. Right. So I studied art. I didn't study design. I wish now I had to study design because that would have been much more useful. But I studied uh, fine art photography. Okay. At that school, and um, and then I never took another photo after that, <laughs> except for like now I'm really into Instagram because it, like you can just make all your photos look really good with those filters. Yeah, <laughs> it's really it's like it adds like this instant depth. It's amazing. Like oh, before I could never take a photo that was in focus or interesting. And now I can. Like, it doesn't matter because I'm like, oh, it's like the out of focus filter. Yeah, now, now it's hip and cool. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. That was intentional. It really suits me. That's yeah. funny. And everyone else, apparently. So, that, I mean, I assume then the, the, the photography background is, pardon me with my burping, uh, was part of the inspiration for Molly Maxwell, then, right? Well, kind of. I mean, as you know, like, you just sort of amalgamate everything into random you know, ideas. like well I know something about this so I'll put it in there but photography for me was a really really important like um, facet of my teenage years in the dark room and um, it's just like finding something to do I guess yeah, I did that in high school too. I loved it. Yeah, it was amazing. It's and the amazing. smell, you remember? It's funny when I oh, saw when I saw like Molly Waxwell. As soon as in the dark room, I was like, my brain went. I could just yeah. smell the absolutely. I can't remember the name of the chemicals, but like the chemicals. Yeah. And it just instantly in that the. Color. I used to have like a little canister of fixer. Fixer, that's what it was like. I could smell. Like carry around. You just sniffed. Yeah. It was like doing a whip it. You just pretty much. <laughs> I was kidding. I was also doing whip it, so, so you yeah. know. So there's that. But um. And then I taught myself how to print color. I never even attempted that. It was that's black what and I white. got into. Like I really that's love hardcore. printing color. And now it's it's pretty obsolete. Like even you can find dark rooms to print black and white now, but you really it's a hard thing to print color. Color. Well, you have to do it like three times, right? Take like three mm, exposures. Isn't that how no, it works? Well, you, you know now you just sort of well print like doing the figuring out what you're gonna do to it. You have to put in the colors, but now like. You put it into a machine to develop it. Mm, yeah. Like the print goes into a pro like I did it in like hot on on in trays on hot plates like in a basement room in a gallery that didn't have ventilation. E. Makes sense now. <laughs> I think that's why I got into school because I was like, and this is how I learned how to print color, and they must have just been like, what? Like these because this guy, this mad scientist guy that, um, like also printed at this dark room that I somehow was affiliated with had rigged up this whole thing so he had like 
timers on hot plates and it made all the chemicals the right temperature. So it was just, it was so jerry rigged. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Not legal at all. Not at all. Like, just toxic. It's like the equivalent <laughs> of like crystal meth in the. Mm. <laughs> exactly. That's with no ventilation. No ventilation. That's amazing. You know, I was like 18 or 17. Did you ever pass, did anyone ever pass out in that no. room? Well, not from those chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> Just general. Well, it was, this, it was in this gallery in Seattle, and they were just, like, they kind of adopted me, and I, like, would live there on and off, and I would show their, my, like, Holga prints, and all this, it was amazing, but there was just this, such a mismatched group of people that would come in and out of that place, so. Yeah. And what made you stop wanting to do photography, then? School. Uh, that's why I didn't study film. Right. That's why I just opened a book to learn about film, was because... Going, I mean, as much as I loved my experience at RISD, for like other reasons, in terms of art, and I, I just it sucked all of it out of me, like all of my own creative impulses and all of my own like weird things that I want. I just I just suddenly overthought everything and thought of it through this lens of of the critique and like it wasn't how I wanted to it make film. Fun. Right. I really wanted to. When, and it took me many more years to start doing film anyway, but when I did, I was like, I'm not going to, I don't want to study it. I tried and failed, and I just, I just wanted to, like, haphazardly <laughs> wanted to fuck around bluster my way through it. Stumble yeah, into yeah, it. Exactly. Well, you stumble well. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Well, I mean, I think, but you did, show, I mean, you did, what, three shorts, right? I did. So, I mean, that's kind of your own film school in a way, right? Yeah, well, I, I actually had a couple of secret shorts before that, which I did fully on my own. And never showed a soul. With like, shot myself and you know edited myself and did everything on it myself as that learning process and um, I would never want anyone to see them. But do you have them somewhere? Though? I do, I do. I have them on like mini DV tapes and. You, know, you gotta pull them out like five ten some, years someday, from now. Someday. Now it wouldn't be. They're not. Because then you won't care. They're not vintage enough yet. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> you know, like, it's not. It's not hip enough yeah. to. But they're not. I don't know. I don't care. Like I think that they're funny. I think they're. See that would be a great bonus feature on your yeah. like your third or fourth. Like, Except for like DVDs don't exist. Film, right. On my short, on the <laughs> on one. the on the like the filmy one. One's sort of more doc and one's more filmy. And the filmy one, like all the music that I put on there is like broadcast and like the oh. Rachel's like stuff right, that I would right. never be able to. Use. Then you just start on YouTube. Yeah. And then hope nobody. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and hope nobody sues yeah. you and just as long as you don't try to make money off it, they probably won't come after you. That's what I'm hoping with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Or the trick is you just get someone else to upload it. And you're like, I don't know how oh, they right. got it. <laughs> yeah. You just create a yeah, fake. Right. I know yeah. I don't do that. Yeah. I promise that it's not how I upload my stuff. Uh, <laughs> what were the Bone Thugs and Harmony? Was that? Oh, in the, in the funeral. Which is well, my now people are going to know. My first, sorry. <laughs> put a hashtag up. Okay, so I had made two different versions. No. So the official version of... The funeral that like aired on TV and stuff like that didn't have it in it, but the one that is up on like my Vimeo has the Bone Thugs and Harmony cover. Was that a Bravo fact? It was. I did a Bravo fact. I did th four Bravo facts. But only, uh, as how many as a director? All. All of them. Yeah. But you said you had three shorts. I know one of them's a music vid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two actually wait sorry two video so two music five videos. Five Bravo facts. I was like a Bravo fact queen for a while. I couldn't. I got one, and then they didn't get me another. I it because I and I, you know, very very. It's it's very thought that I would be no problem. I know you never. It it, it it's like the. Well, you still want your ends. Yeah. You think that, but it's not, not true. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Lesson at home, guys. Grants, not. Yeah. Well, given. but it wasn't like I half-assed the second application. It was yeah. like I put the same amount of work into it, but you just assumed it was like, eh, nailed no. this one. Well, I had gotten like five. I had never been turned down, and then my last one I got turned down. Okay, I don't feel so bad now. Like, my last one. So, after all the successes... That's even kind of... But in a way... But I guess because they keep on changing with the jury, right? So, they well, probably don't just care got, that... Yeah, and, and I think that they just... It got, like... The competition got stiffer and, you know, classic. Like, I think that round... Like, the people who got grants that round were, like, insane. I was like, oh my god, these people are crazy. Like, it was the equivalent of, like... Adam McGoyan and Cronenberg. We're submitting for Bravo Facts. Like, they might have actually gotten grants that round. I'm That's not sure. Funny. I can't guarantee they didn't. That's so funny. <laughs> so, 
Sorry, <laughs> you didn't get this grant because Deepa Meta. Yeah, she just wanted to do a short. <laughs> so I'm, like, what? I'm just gonna do a short. <laughs> That's really shitty, Deepa. It's like really. That just kidding. Comments? She didn't. I just said that because she's one of the only Canadian names I know. <laughs> I, I don't know if that made the comment worse <laughs> or not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else was I gonna ask you? I had something else. <laughs> oh, um. I never, I was, I've never done a music video. They're so fun. Because nobody cares about if it has a point. I think it's probably because, like, were you friends with bands? Is that how well, it I, started? Well, I, I knew a lot more about the music world than I knew about the film world. So I felt like it was a good entree. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I really lucked out with my first one because it was just like a perfect storm of, of luck, which was that uh, Final Fantasy said yes, and I didn't even know him. Like, he was just super nice. And then on the on the Bravo Fact or not Bravo Fact Video Fact committee was like a big supporter of that, and and then he became a really big supporter of me. Paul Gagnon, shout out, uh, like launched me into the world of getting money from he people. He birthed you. He did. He did. And then after that, would kind of like help to fight for for things that I wanted to do. That's nice to have. I know it's like amazing to fight for your corner. And he came to see Molly at Tiff Next Wave. And he sat there, and it was like he was, and he asked a question. And I was like, "You were there from the beginning." <laughs> what did he ask? Ah, uh, I can't remember. Whenever I have to do Q and A's, it's like this, this awful. Was, that was a great story until that. No, happened. but okay, you don't. You, I'm sure, understand. Actually, I think you're probably better at it. I, I, I think you, I can guarantee you're better at it. Because me, it's just this like black spots in front of my eyes, and I'm like, "Shit, oh, I gotta think." It's because of all the think. huffing you do before oh, that. Oh my god, what did I say? I said something terrible. Like it's just. I hate that so much. I hate Q and A's. If I could never do another Q and A, it would be the. It would. I would enjoy filmmaking so much more. Oh, you you just you'd rather like. So you don't like going to festivals and that kind of stuff. I don't. I don't mind going. Well, I don't love it. Ah, interesting. It. it makes me really anxious. Ah, is it because you don't. Just because you know massive. Anxiety over how the audience. I have like react. huge stage fright. Oh, okay, that's. You know, so it's it's just. And everybody's like, you did great. I'm like, that's not the point. The point is like the internal struggle. That I well, they don't see it. You're like a duck on the surface, like <laughs> calm on the surface. Because when you did, like you, I mean, you went up after and before my master, but that's also a warm crowd at yeah. that, that screening that I was at. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're, oh, yeah. people that you know, it's no. not strangers. No, you didn't. Does like, that make a difference though? No. Oh, no. you're fucked either way. I hate it all. I would rather just, I would rather be in, in the shadows. Mm. But I just want to get famous enough so that I could just be like Terrence Malick and never have to like ever be in anywhere. Like just be invisible. That would be the best. You would love that. I would love that. Do you like watching it with an audience though, or does that? I do like watching it with okay. an audience. I just don't like speaking in front of an audience. So you'd rather. But I love that. I love watching with an audience because I love the room. I love the feeling, and it's always different. And I love I love that. That's like that's the that's the shit. Like that's what. Why you do it? Yeah, who's in? I think it was Sean Sisterna was in a couple of months back, and we were talking about, and he hates sitting with an audience. Really? I, th- I don't know if it's like, I guess it depends how many screenings you're in. Uh, you have to 20 times it might. Yeah, you just well, don't I mean, I don't do anymore. it. Like, I don't sit in every screening. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that's just it. Yeah, for me, so, I mean, I love, because especially if you're doing something that has any kind of emotion, you want to yeah. know, you want to feel, feed off it and yeah. know what worked and what didn't oh, work. I love, I love it. Because I'm really sensitive to the, the mood of the room, too, you know. So, yeah, it's the talking. But. And what have you? So here's a good question. So what have you learned from watching screenings of, of your first feature with audiences? Nothing. <laughs> Excellent. And we're done. Thanks yeah. for joining. No, no. <laughs> uh, I see. I. Like, it's hard or what surprised you, maybe? Is there something that... Oh, well, there's always weird laughs, as you know, because yeah. you do awkward humor, too. That there's, there you're like, oh, well, that I didn't even think that was funny. And you didn't laugh where I thought it was funny. You know, like... And then you're really proud <laughs> of it. You're like, wow, there's a little extra joke. <laughs> yeah. Bonus joke. Weird. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't actually think that's funny, but good on you guys. Yeah, good um, <laughs> Or you're like, what the fuck are you laughing you at You guys that? are way weirder than me. Yeah. All right. Um... Or they'll laugh at something like that, and then, like, like you know, 30 seconds later, there's a joke that you know is supposed to kill, and yeah. it's like, that one I worked on really hard. Yeah. It's always, it's hard because I think in the process it becomes so warped 
because you see it so many times that you just start to pick apart every single little beat that you might have done differently. So I can't objectively watch it with an audience and think about it like that because I'm only seeing my growth mm. in terms of what I would do. It's not related to the audience. It's more related to like my, especially now, growth as a writer, you know? Um, but you can't, I, I've, I just try to let go because... You have to. You have to. And You're I also, like, I, I'm proud of the film and, and like I want to have warm affection for the film. Like I don't want to just turn myself into like a crazy person. Like, yeah, that's like, I mean, that's like even like, re- I mean, I haven't rewatched it in a long time, but I know the last time I watched, rewatched my first feature, I was like... I might do a couple of things differently, but I'm like, but I'm not gonna yeah. go crazy over because it's, there's no point. It's like you want to move forward. Take it and move. Yeah, and it's like, okay, well now I would probably do this, or I probably wouldn't have that scene, or I would change the conflict point, or whatever yeah. it is, or add an extra obstacle. But it's like, but I didn't, and it works, and it's fine, and now I move on, and I'll do better next time. Yeah, for and sure. You should be like slightly embarrassed, I think, when you look back at your old work. Just enough to be like, I know, because otherwise you're not getting better. Absolutely. You're not improving, right? I think for me, it's always like pacing. You know, mm. I, when I look back, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, mm, like first, you know, nine minutes. Like, I wouldn't really... I get w- into it. I, w- I don't know. I feel like the pacing is off, you know? I don't know. But then you're nitpicking, right? Like, next time. Yeah. Pacing's tough. It is. Especially as like a first-timer. But you learn that, but that's something you learn too, I think you learn. And it depends on what... Pacing's tough too, because like, if you're watching a certain kind of show, it's like, I find that really blends into you. And I know, because yeah. coming out of... Um, while, I, while I was uh, editing Sex After Kids, at night, I was working on this really fast-paced reality show during the day. So I know, in a way, it was good, because I'm like, don't need that, don't need that, yeah, get rid yeah. of that. We just need to get... <laughs> totally. But then it was like, you start watching back, you're like, oh my God, it's a bit schizophrenic. Yeah. Okay, I can let it breathe a little yeah. bit more. So it was weird going back and forth between those two different styles within the same day. Yeah. Uh, no, but, I get that. But but you know what I mean? So, or if you're just watching something a lot, like you're watching, mm-hmm. say if you're binge watching like a, a certain TV series while you're working on something, or you're writing something, I'm sure that, that just blends in, so all of a sudden you're writing voices that I've been don't. writing, I've been writing this thing, I'm, I'm not hardcore writing it right now, but I've been writing it since the fall, and I had to stop watching TV, and I had to just start watching like things that I really liked, mm. even if it wasn't related to what I was trying to do, just like things that made me respond in a way to film again. Mm. Yeah. Do you find, do you watch, like, stuff that's in the same wheelhouse of something you're working on to try to, like, get you in that mood? It's not so much even that. It's, like, because it's, I find it really difficult to find things that I think match the tone that I want. It's, I I try to just watch things that I respect. Yeah. And inspire me. And even if it isn't, like, the genre or the, you know, whatever, just, just the, like, watching what they're doing and and why and how and all that, like. And how to break down the construction of it. Yeah, and, and I find that to be really good. Like I, I think that it's important for me to not be watching too much crap when I'm when I'm writing. Because I, I watch a lot of it, you know? I will. Like, I will really just... I would be the happiest person in the world if I could just watch Friday Night Lights, like, forever. It's one of my, my dark holes. I haven't watched... <laughs> I know, I, I I'm, I'm off. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, my God. I okay, know. yeah. It's on Netflix, though, I think. Yeah. So I should catch up at one point. Yeah, but I'm, but that, cool. but that's hard. But it's hard when you're like, I'm sure you're in the exact same position where it's like, you're you're, you're one brain saying you must create stuff, yeah. stop, stop wasting time watching stuff. But the other brain's like, well, I need to watch it because that's inspiration. Yeah, but and, I don't watch that stuff like that. Like I watch that stuff like, like doing drugs. Like it's crack. Yeah, like I, I like it's basically like the same impulse of like drinking too much. You know, it's just like I numb numb the brain. <laughs> it's too hard. Numb it. Like, I don't watch it like, oh, like, that's an interesting bit. You know, like, I'm just like, eh. Oh, I'm yeah, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not creative. It's not, I bet now I've been, I haven't been watching anything. I'm on this, it's like, it's so nerdy, but I'm, I'm like reading and then I'm trying to see films in the theater. Mm. I'm not watching anything else, really. Like, I'll do like one episode of like House of Cards or something, but not like binge TV watching. Good for you. I'm trying, but it won't last. Mm. It won't. It won't. I go in peaks. I don't really have a, like a, 
like a writing routine. Like I to, I'll just binge write. Yeah, me too. But I then I won't write for months or weeks or whatever, right? <clears throat> I also can only write between the hours of like 10 and 2. During the day? Yeah, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's not Sometimes bad. Sometimes 9 and 2. Or 9 and 1. That's not bad. That's it, though. It's like, so if, if, if those hours aren't available to me... Oh. <laughs> like, if you have like a lunch, you're fucked. No, well, when I'm, <laughs> no or like I'm, if I'm working a job for actually money. Oh, because you, you can't write at night. Yeah, I can't. I used to be able to, like when I was writing Molly, I would get up at 5. Because mm. I was working... I, I was working on a, a full-time job. So I would get up at five because I, I couldn't stand the thought that I was giving like the best of myself to this job. Yeah. So, cause I would come home and I didn't have anything left. So I would get up before the job because I wanted to. And then you day. don't hate the job because you're like, I've, got, I've gotten my thing. I've done, today. I've given two hours to this and then you, you've got the, the leftovers rather than the other way around. And that was like, that was important at that time. Nice. I'm not that motivated now, though. I used to before before <laughs> I had kids. I would write in the morning. I would get up like super early and get and write. Yeah. Um, and now and now I don't write in the morning at all. Unless I sometimes if I'm if I have a chance before I have to get into like the daily work, I'll I'll try because I I think morning is the best time. Yeah, for me, it's the only time. Uh, or if I if I write the, if I do write at night, usually the next morning is me rewriting whatever I spit out the night before right. and my tired fatigueness. All right, and do some questions. Yeah. All right, so do you know the basic rules? No. It's essentially it's just if you pull out, you gotta hand it to me though. You can't read it yourself because I might have to modify it because they're meant to be kind of general. Okay. Um, so I have to take the question. You pull it out. You, you get to pick the question, but I, I'll read it. And there's you can veto one if one's like something you just don't want to answer. Okay. If you knew you could get away with it, what crime would you commit? This doesn't include all the crimes that I've already committed that I've gotten away with. You can talk more of those if you want. <laughs> but then you'd be... Clearly. I can talk about you, can, you can pretend. <laughs> well, well hypothetically. Hypothetically. Like I had a friend. I'm going to murder somebody. <laughs> uh, okay. Crime committed to get away with. Like, clearly, giant fraud. Giant. Oh, that's a good answer. Yeah, like, like not, like, I'm not gonna, like... Do hey, you if you said murder, you'd be a sociopath. But you're like, not, I just want to steal any, money from people. I don't have any interest in, in murdering anyone. Not yet. Oh, I don't know. I think that people's own existences is so miserable, usually, <laughs> that it's much worse to just, like, live. Let them live? Than, wow. Than to... That's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for that. That was the best answer I think I've had in the podcast. I don't know if you know that I'm a misanthrope. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I so, like you. We, 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 we should go drinking one night. <laughs> like, clearly. I mean, yeah. It's much this worse like to let someone... a small mercy to die, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm stealing all this. <laughs> Your character in my next piece. Anyway, so... <laughs> so you're a happy person, generally. I, I, so I think of myself, uh, and you might recognize this from Molly, or you might not, as like an optimistic cynic hmm. like i really do think that i i am a, a, like in a weird way a positive person like all of the stuff that i make is weirdly hopeful um i don't think i make things that are very like despairing no i wouldn't say that yeah, but so it's I, like but you also don't shy away from that no no not at all no but um i think that i think that fraud like I, I would totally embezzle people, especially if if they were like giant corporations. You feel would, like yeah, man, but not like the little man. I wouldn't embezzle the little man. No, it's like when I was a giant shoplifter, I would only shoplift from like WalMarts and stuff. I wouldn't shoplift from like family-owned stores. Cause that's shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you're a big studio, Sarah's gonna just rip you off of right and center when she hands in her invoices and like yeah. her petty cash deals yeah because like with my budgets they'll be like yeah your your budget was like five dollars and this you is ridiculous. spent seven yeah this is ridiculous it's ridiculous you bought lunch <laughs> we provide lunch <laughs> toast and cheese oh my god yeah but did you have like on molly did you have like a craft truck and stuff yeah we yeah, did it you. up we yeah, did it we up have... because I um, know some things. I'm a really good manager, hmm. which isn't something that creative people say very well. 
like or very often. But that's a, that's an important part of directing, though. But I think that it's really important to treat people with, with respect, and you need to respect their time, and you need to respect their effort, and you need to respect their presence, and you need to treat them well. Like yeah. especially when you're not the director on set. I've been on set, not as the director. It's mm. effing boring. Like, and it's a, it is often like long and hard and boring and tiring and. You can need to treat people well. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I treat people well and feed them well. Yeah. And I care too. I, I know I care too much. I've had actually people tell me that so you're being my, no. nicer to me than you need to be. That's funny because I never go overtime either. Like, no. I, I think it's so disrespectful. I think it's it's just ginormously like um, imposing and it's basically telling people that their time and their efforts is like not worth your creative vision like it it, it creates yeah. this incredible disparity of power you know and depending how long you're shooting too you just burn people yeah. out over time right exactly so just for your own purposes you're 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 going against your own purposes by burning everyone out and making them angry at you yeah and that's for me it's like because i shot both my two films in like 15 days and for me i'm like that was but we were we never ever went into overtime i don't think really um we also weren't. We would go like half hours. Sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. that. Kind of, you're, you're finishing a shot. You're not going to stop. Yeah. Um, but but we worked crazy. Like we worked our asses off mm-hmm. those days. But we didn't really go into overtime um, outside of like a wrap out kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but but if you're doing but we couldn't like the way we shot especially the way we shot sex after kids. There's no way if we were doing like 15 days in a row or like five day weeks kind of thing. It just. Uh, we would have been dead. Yeah. Like the way, how fast we were shooting and how, or not necessarily how fast, but how much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so for me, I'm like, then I know whatever I do next, I'm like, days, extra days. Yeah. It's just so. I know. I know. Important. Question number two. Okay. That was easy. Harmless. I, I have so many crimes that I can tell you about. That's good. That's good. Well, you can tell me. Well, you don't. Yeah, after off camera. You're getting all new ones. These are new questions that nobody's had. Okay. Oh, but this is like for an actor, so it doesn't oh, count. Oh, yeah. What can, can I answer it? Okay, sure. We can try. <laughs> Look at you. I usually put it down people... No. I might not answer. I can. I reserve the right. To okay, well, I can, I can modify this and this can work. <laughs> if you cool. were... Have you ever acted? No. Okay. Ugh. If you could... If, if you had to say, <laughs> take like a classic role, could be theater, could be film, whatever, what role would you want to play? I would want to play... Um, I would want to play Claire Danes' character on My So Called Life. <laughs> That's amazing. Or Laura Palmer. But she was really just in photos, pretty much. I, I guess there was... You just want to... <laughs> you just want to be a stock photo. Well, oh, I'll send you this photo. So in... in, in, uh, in see, it's confusing for me because here you guys say university and like college isn't as good as university. So I figured I can't... I don't know how to call... You know, school anymore because like oh you know what I mean. But University anyway, is like highbrow, I, I guess. Oh, so at, like... at art school, how's that? There you um, go. My my best friend in art school and I made um, like we had our senior thesis show together and we recreated this like scene from Twin Peaks and I was Laura Palmer. I was like wrapped in plastic tarp and he was um, Agent. Uh... I can't remember the names. Oh my god, I'm such a terrible terrible. It's okay. No, this is like a. It's a major problem that I can't remember this. It's the whippets. Uh, yes. Um, and we like posed in front of the falls where they shot it. And that was our senior thesis like poster. Anyway, so. I know why the Claire Danes. My wife is a huge so uh, Because like, I think it is probably the most influential thing that I've ever seen in my life. It's amazing. Like, you haven't seen my so-called life? It changed my life. Like it, it really totally, absolutely. I was really lucky because at the time that I was watching, like I, when I was like a teenager, what I was watching was like my so-called life, Twin Peaks, and like Northern Exposure. You know, those mm-hmm. are the only things I wasn't into film at all. That's what, and that I was watching that and like MTV. <laughs> That's fine. And that is completely my influence. There is a, before I have to go to the side story. So Bonnie, who is just started watching The Walking Dead, was okay. texting me the other night when she was watching it, and she said, "What was the quote? You said something about you were making a Claire Danes face. It was like oh, Claire Danes crying face. She was like she was, that was she, the face I was making the whole time like." <laughs> but as soon as you say that, no, no, no offense against Claire Danes, but her crying face is pretty distinct. Uh, see, I haven't seen Walking Dead. Oh, okay. But you don't need to... It's just I know she's scary. not in that. No. But you know the Claire Danes crying face. Yeah. Yeah. 
I it's like so a shitty. crumple. It's a crumple. It is. It is. Like, it's but like, it's pretty amazing. It's like a, it's like a full on crumple. It's so emotional. Especially in my so called life, though, because like her face hadn't angularized the way that it did when she. It was still very rounded, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So that that was like, that was definitely the most influential thing I think that uh, I ever saw. So therefore, and also I, I felt like it was me. Yeah. I really felt like it was. I good. think that's why that shows. It's still, I think, people if they discover now, it's still very popular that way yeah. because I think it was so universal. I always, I'm always curious about what they would have done with that show if it had lasted. Mm -hmm. Like if it would have. Yeah. Like me, is it is it so kind of universally regarded because it was so? Maybe. There's a really in funny um, article at the back of this month's playback that it's. Um, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the names wrong, but it's the the showrunners from uh, Michael's Tuesdays and Thursdays, mm -hmm. and uh, Tyler Book Imperial, and it's 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 like top ten list on how to create a cult hit, and it's like you know, one of the first things is like make sure get that canceled. yeah get canceled <laughs> early 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 enough so that there's only a few episodes and people revere them yeah and uh, but I wonder if that's not like for like freaks and geeks like a show like that yeah for sure I think it's true like you don't wanna it's like. It's like the people that you dated that you broke up before you got bored of them, right? Yeah. It's like the same thing. It's like you regret, but if we just stuck around a little bit longer, it would have been terrible. Yeah. It would have been just like every other bad thing. But yeah. since it, it, like you're the one that like I didn't completely get bored of. Well, yeah, that's just no, but it's true because there's a lot of shows <laughs> that kind of like they they stay on too long and then they run out of. I mean, that's my problem with because I'm trying. I keep on trying to work on television stuff, and I'm just like I have a hard time finding something that. I think I could stay interested yeah. in over a long period of time. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because that's hard. Absolutely. And I also tend to think in single arcs. I yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I also I just find that like, if you go into too many seasons, then you have to become kind of soap operatic. You know, like it, like it becomes like. Because you can't take the characters. False stakes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because you can't. Yeah, you gotta keep putting them through the same shit and the same ringer. Yeah. Eventually, you just. Especially if you're doing like something that's really heavy. It's like you just want these people to be happy at some point. Yeah, but even like with a show that I love, like Community, and you're like, oh, okay, right, you guys are like, f your friends and, you know, whatever. Yeah, you're like, friends again, yeah. Yeah, like, very it's very all funny. about like you guys like figuring out that it's more than just yourselves and it's. Da -da -da. Like, you're just. That like, is a really recurring. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm community. Uh, okay, come on. Let's just yeah. have more like hijinks. Yeah, just do another claymation episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I know, but they have. It's like somehow they have to keep coming back to this weird like heart of the series crap. They're just like, ugh, nobody cares anymore. But yeah, <laughs> we're not watching you for the heart. <laughs> no, like also, I don't know. I just feel like can't we evolve past that now? Mm. I mean, people watch things because of the characters. They don't watch it because of some like like theme of the show. Really, I don't think. I don't. You know. Not for every episode. Like, you don't have to have it in every... In every Especially like, after a couple seasons, you know? Like, like we get it. You're friends. Yeah. You're always going to come yeah. back together. Also, you know? you're, like, self-absorbed, but you're still friends, you know? <laughs> like, we, we get it. We bought into it. We got past the first season. We, we're settled in. Yeah, I know. I know. That's funny. All right. Numero three. What's the worst thing that's happened to you that's most inspired your work? Dig deep. You can veto that if. Okay. This is a weird one. I'm all ears. It's about my new project. Okay. So, hopefully, my stepkids aren't going to watch this. So, the worst thing that ever happened to me, also, the best thing in other ways, was becoming a stepmom. Um, and I'm writing, my new script is about becoming a stepmom and being like, you know, a selfish bastard and becoming a stepmom. Um, because I'm really happy that I got married, but like becoming a stepmom was really like the m most difficult thing that I ever did in my life. And I'm still like completely failing at it. How old are the kids? They're 10 and 17. Ooh, that's tough. Well, they weren't, they were like six years younger than that when I met them. Uh, but this but every, any, every, see, this is the thing about year olds, like, I don't the, need you at the, all. The best part <laughs> is that this is the thing about being a stepmom is that any age that I would have told you, you would have been like, oh, that's tough. 
You know, that's <laughs> funny. That's very, very if, funny. If I couldn't, I wouldn't have, there's no age that I would have thrown out at you that you would have been like, oh, that's a, that's a good age to be No, you know what? Home. I'd be like, no, because I would have said, oh, that's not true. Because if it's like, if they're really young, they kind of, I think they would just naturally gravitate towards you a little more. Because yeah. they kind of need you. Right. You could, you know, destroy them if you if you could. But like a seventeen year old, they're like, I don't fucking need you. Yeah, You're just like, in my way. Peace out. Yeah. So they don't say that because they're they don't say peace out. They're not from the nineties. Nineties or whenever the that aughts. was. The aughts. I can't say that with a straight. That's the first time I've ever <laughs> I've never used that. Did you see me struggling yeah. with the like two thousand? I almost forgot what it was until yeah. I I can't believe I pulled that out of my ass. That's good. Yeah, good That's for good. me. But like, and I've ruined it. I don't. Life. I don't like. They're great kids. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. They're not like the monsters that you see in portrayals of step kids. Like they're great, and it's it was it's more like my struggle with it. I'm just, and I have my own kids, and it's the same. It's like because as you know, as someone who writes and stuff, you need to have that time. Yeah. And so you struggle that you feel like terrible for taking it, but if you don't, you're just gonna treat them like shit because you're in a bad mood because you're not taking that yeah. time. So it's it's weird. It, I get it. I totally get it. And with in, in, in I can't imagine it's got to be even harder when they're not your own kids mm. because. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh my god, you're so annoying, and you're not even mine. Ah, yeah, I'm just kidding. Guys, no, 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 I love you guys. Just kidding. But so that's that's a great answer. Is it? No. I think so. Right. But no, it's it's, it's, it's interesting to me because it's like the writing this one was really hard. Well, especially because, probably because you know they're going to see it. Someday they're going to see it, and... And they can't help but think that this is informed by... Yeah, well, clearly. Like, I'm not really creative. I just sort of, just regurgitate, like, things from my life and sort of, like, like, like fuzz it around the edges, you know? Change people's names. There's nothing wrong with that. I know. But they're, it, yeah. It's, it's good. Mm. I'm excited about that film. But it is, like, a scary territory for me. Yeah. But you know what? I think that's the best. I mean, I think you should... Be scared of what you're writing. I think so. Because you're going somewhere. I think so. Interesting. It was funny. It was like and that was. I know with sex with the kids it was like that. It was like the first time I watched it with my wife. I'm like, holy shit. There's a lot of stuff about you're us. You're like, oh, right. I'm like, I didn't even realize how much <laughs> yeah. stuff about us is in here. Yeah. Oh, uh, but she was cool with it all. That's good. Because all the funny stuff is from her. That's good. Mostly. That's flattering. I yeah. steal well. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. What's it called? The stepmom. You it's can't. It's called take that Swan title. Dive. Swan Dive. That works. I get it. Yeah. It 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 make it's really just like a picture of the arc of the film. Like it really, it, when you read it or see it, you'll you'll be like, oh, okay. Is it something that you're just kind of writing to get going, or do um, you have some? No, we're doing it with union pictures. Look at you. You know. Thanks. I was just curious. Yeah, no, it's great. Like they, they were really, really supportive, and um, Sandra just like poached me out of Talent Lab. Nice. And, uh, and so it's been great ever since then. Um, so it was nice to get out, of, come out of Molly, and like have something to go. Have, with. Like they were just like, "What do you want to do? Let's do it." And it was awesome because that's like the best thing that you can have coming out of that situation. And I already had wanted, to, like I'd been kind of stewing on it for so long and it was nice to just be able to um, kind of land and and then I took some time off and I just went and wrote it, you know? Yeah. That's exciting. That's awesome. And Molly, just because this is probably going to air in probably around April because April, it's April when you're doing the theatrical release, it's right? It's true. That's very April exciting. April 19th at the Carlton, guys. You know what? Don't, Get ready. It doesn't matter. It's like there are still like it's it's not that common that like a Canadian film gets mm. a release, even you know, let alone big or small. Yeah, it's you know. We're excited. We're really excited. Now though, it's like I know how much begging I'm going to be doing just of every single person that I know to get people out. To get people out mm. because it, it you know it really makes a huge difference. Contests, social media. You know, we're getting there. That kind of stuff. Makes a difference. That. It's tough, but you got to do it. Yeah, it's good. But we're excited to just even have be able to like have everybody come and see it. Yeah. And what's the moment thing? Like I know to scream, but what, how did like just how that happen? I don't even know how that happened. They just called. They well, we were at. Like, you have the same initials as us. You have no. two of the same letters, and you tell your no. film. No, I think it's because we make a moment joke in the film. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we like we. That means they I have really a good do. sense of humor. I really think that they were like. 
because there's two Wilma references in it. I think they were like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> like, what is weird? Did they do Bill Cosby film? voice? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best thing. <laughs> Bill Cosby was like, <laughs> I, I saw this film. <laughs> like, oh, this film. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah. We'll stop that. Um, and and so we were just we were at Palm Springs and and Brigitte from Telephone was there and she was just like oh we just found out that like you got invited to do this Canadian front thing at MoMA and we were like awesome it was crazy so someone else told you yeah you- <laughs> yeah that's amazing when that happens don't you yeah. love it when that happens it was amazing well I mean it was Telephone yeah yeah well but, yeah you know because they so they knew yeah, yeah yeah it wasn't like just some stranger yeah yeah like hey. Hey, <laughs> some guy in the street. Hey, did you know? Hey, Fair you enough. Heard. Yeah, no. So it was, but it was great because it was like this nice, it was nice to be able to, because you know how premieres are, so I didn't have to necessarily crash immediately into the after premiere bed, you know. What's this? You don't do that? Well, I don't know um, what you're talking about. I always like hit this like, like, uh, after, after a premiere. Oh, you're like, ugh. Just like, ugh. I keep myself constantly working uh, on something new, so that way see, I... I don't, I'm so lazy. Like, I don't do... I can spend an entire day just, like, sitting on the couch not doing anything. Really? Yeah, like, just, like, looking at the ceiling. Wow. Yeah. I'm exaggerating. It's the whippets. I'm it's... exaggerating slightly. But, uh, and I've never been that lazy until recently, in the past couple of years. <laughs> but, like, it's I, an, it's a... I don't keep myself busy. Hmm. I'm, I really don't. I can't express how lazy I am. You should just get, at least get a crossword. No, I don't. I'm just like... Or play Angry Birds. I just read... I, right now, I just read Swedish murder mysteries. <laughs> That's your thing? Yeah. It's your guilty pleasure? I love Swedish murder mysteries. Why? What's what's special about Swedish murder mysteries? I don't know. I don't know. I just like them. I don't. I like them better. They don't feel as like badly written, but they're still murder mysteries, so you still kind of like want to know what happens. They're just clever? They, 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 I mean, I read other books. Like I'm not just a total... <laughs> Are you gonna? You should adapt to Swedish murder mystery. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. I would that. imagine you could probably get the rights to those. I don't think so. I really? Think probably. Are you kidding me? They're probably like remaking the film that someone in Sweden's not even made yet. Mm. <laughs> but my producer's going to Sweden next week, so maybe he can hook me up. Get him on it. Yeah. Just give him a list. He's of... representing for Molly. Nice. In Sweden. <laughs> get me one of them murder mysteries. All right. Yeah. I just. I know you're going to like a kids festival. But while you're there, just <laughs> swing on by the murder keep mystery. Keep your eyes open for. Uh, yeah, someone's someone <laughs> on the street hawking. Uh, kids murder mysteries, fine. We'll start there. We'll start there and move our way up. <laughs> is there like a series you follow, or is just as long as the Swedish are right good? Right now, I'm, oh, I don't want to talk about the Swedish murder mystery. No. No. We're gonna move on then. Let's move on. I really didn't give a Am shit. I'm doing so, so bad. No, you're doing okay. great. <laughs> My body is becoming much more Muppet-like as the interview is going on. My hand is not up her ass, I promise. <laughs> what makes you want to tell stories? Why do this? Why not be an accountant? I just really am not good at anything else. That's like me. I'm really bad at, like, everything. I'm really... I'm, you're lazy. I'm lazy. You're not good at stuff. I didn't used to be lazy. I've just got you don't lazy. believe in studying craft. I just, yeah. You're this um, awesome anomaly. I am so consumed with like my own thoughts so it's really the only thing i don't know i never wanted to do film i was never like a person that watched films i get embarrassed when i do things like a round table and yeah, right, 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 like, there. And then when i watched some incredible bloody yeah and, and then they rattle off a bunch of other things that i'm like oh my god okay they're gonna come around to me and i'm gonna be like Ooh, that's so cool life um, but own oh, that. No, <laughs> I know. I own it. I do. By your, I do. Like, but I was never interested in in film. I never watched films. I I didn't I didn't care about film at all. I wanted to be a photographer. Mm-hmm. And then I was dating this guy in my twenties, and he had this incredible like laser disc collection, and I watched all of them at different times. Like just and he had he just had like he had like red, white, and blue the those films and he had like um rushmore and he had different like criterions and yeah and different uh, criterions and stuff like that and it was like the first time i had ever really gotten interested in film at all hmm. and then i went and saw amelie at the seattle film festival fuck i watched that i went to see the movie like nine times yeah i saw it five no four i saw it four times i kept them bringing people i know me too 
Actually, no, that's not true at all. But I kept telling people about it because yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to go by myself. I didn't want to have anybody with me. Yeah, I went at least half of those times. I probably went by myself because yeah. I just wanted to see it again. And and I started to feel like what I had not been satisfied with photography was something that I could see being possible in film, which is like creating a world. Mm. And that was what I was always really frustrated with was photography was just like it was like capturing this instant, and I wanted to create moods mm. and and like tone has always been my most like my most important thing mm. about filmmaking more than the story more than anything it's like the tone of it and what you feel like what are you trying to say and not even what you're, i'm trying to say because i don't usually want to say anything i just get made to say things by people like i really just want you to feel a certain yeah, 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 way yeah, i want to yeah, take yeah. you but that's like, something that's still yeah i don't i don't know um and then I forgot what I was talking about. We were talking about... I didn't want to make film. You don't want to make film, laser disc. Oh, Amelie. We were talking about Amelie. Yeah, and... but what was the point? What was the question? The question Why was, did you what want makes to do you this? stories? I don't know. I think that... I I used, I always wrote stories hmm. when I was a Tim kid. Here. And then... Like the same even person. In, I know. Hey, twins. Um, and then when I was in photography school, I wrote... I, I actually got way more interested in writing short stories and I had this incredible advisor who um I don't want to get him in trouble so I'm not gonna tell him tell his name because make did. it up give him a new name right no, I don't because I really because no, he helped me so much but I he gave me a credit that was like a kind of a falsified credit so I needed a studio credit and he helped like make it so that I could write short stories short stories and get a studio credit because all I wanted to do was write short stories but you still did work. I did like a ton of work. I actually did way more work than probably everybody else was doing. So then you're good. I know. So but you're karmically. But he was great, and he was so encouraging, and it was one of those great things. Yeah. Um, but all I wanted to do suddenly, once I got to photography school, was write stories. And I would stay up all night, like writing these stories. And, nice. Um, you gotta go with your passions. I know. Yeah, but don't ever feel bad about not like being able to rattle off all of the foreign masters and this and that. I, I had like roommates in in college because I did go to film school. Um, it was like it was all like they had those collections, and there's a, there's a lot of those movies I do really like, but a lot of them feel like homework. Right. And I and I finally got to the point where I could accept them. Like if it feels like homework, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, like I could just watch Romeo and Michelle's High School reunion all day. <laughs> I would make own me that. Happy. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a problem with it. Good. F- but it's funny when you go to those festivals and you're like, you get those okay. questions. What's the weir- What's the worst question you've ever gotten in the Q and A? At Palm Springs, I got this great question that was like, everybody was so positive and amazing and like gushing. And then I got this guy that was like, so was that ending intentional or did you just run out of money because you're an indie film? (laughs) And and at the time I was like, okay, I'm not even going to, I'm just going to actually just answer this guy completely sincerely. But then my producer had the most hilarious, what I should have said was like, well, I don't know if you know this, but films don't actually shoot sequentially. Was was what Mark said, but like that was way later. At the time, I was just like, well, actually, that was the ending that I wanted, and I told him all the reasons on earth why it was the ending that I wanted. Like, I went into like levels of symbolism, and you know, like everything. Like, just bored me to death. Just like, <laughs> like over the top, like explanation. Like, fuck you for asking this question. Yeah. Here, it you comes. were gonna have to listen to my layers of fucking crazy town symbolism right now. <laughs> I wish I was there for that. Was that at Palm Springs? It was in Palm Springs. They didn't even record it? I don't think so. Not that I was aware of, but... Mm. Um, that was So that was really good. Uh, that was. I think that's the only time I've ever really gotten like an, an, an antagonistic question. question. I Usually you don't. I mean, it's pretty rare. No, I've gotten some people who are like, have you gotten backlash? Like, controversial. Like, from the... Con- has there been any controversy from the, from the film? And um, we haven't had any at all, really. I'm like, I actually think that maybe it's like it like, should be more controversial, you know, but... Because of the, t- the student-teacher stuff. Right? Yeah, and also because the treatment of it is very, you know... Casual. Casual. I mean, to me it isn't casual, but it comes off as being very casual. Like, yeah, I, don't know if, I mean, I think it's also, it's been such a topic that's been... I don't, I don't, it's not, I don't want to say done to death because that's not it at all, but it's like, it's not... So, I mean, your take on it was very fresh, mm-hmm. but it's something that's been in the news. It's, it's, a, but it's, a, it's a news story that's not new. No. It's like it's been around. It's not like a shocking thing that never happened before. So I think 
that helps ease you into it. Yeah, but even this year, like, I think there's like four films out this year that are all dealing with the same kind of material. But you know what, though? I stand by that it's like, yours is a very unique voice Mm -hmm. of that. So it's like nobody else is going to tell the story the way you told it. And so I think when you do that, you're fine. If you're doing like the bad movie of the week version, right. then yeah, you can copy that one nine ways to Sunday. But yours is a very distinct and unique story. And it's not like, it's not, I wouldn't say yours is a story about a student teacher relationship. It's about like, it just happens to have that. Mm. It's about, it's more about this girl and her journey. And that's just part of it. Mm-hmm. Right? You're fine. All right. All right. Last question. Okay. Yay. Yay. Woo woo. What is it? All right. Oh, what was your favorite scene you've ever directed? Oh, oh wait, okay, that's different. Because what was your, what was my favorite scene, and what was my favorite scene I've ever directed oh. are two different questions. Then give me two different answers. Okay, my favorite scene now is the scene where she goes over to his apartment the first time. Um, which I'm not gonna say why, because nobody's seen it. Uh, I didn't want to ruin that, but it's like. The amount of responses that I've had about that scene is just like so heartwarming and amazing. And when you write something, you never know that it's gonna reach people. Like, because on paper, I was like, oh, this seems kind of weird. Like, I don't know if people are gonna. Well, that scene doesn't have much any dialogue really no. either, right? Because I, I first saw that scene when you did the lift panel. We did a lift uh, yeah. panel together. Uh, that's why I saw it out of context. Mm-hmm. And it works. For the, but it's, it's also the scene where I, I remember the first time I watched it, I'm like, no, I have no idea what this movie is going to be about. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, so, now... So that's your favorite finished scene? That's my favorite finished scene. It was probably my least... One of my least favorite scenes to, to direct. Shoot. Yeah. Because it's awful to shoot those kind of things. It's like, kind of awkward. It's awkward. That one wasn't as bad as the later ones. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite scene I've ever directed... I'm going to change it. I'm going to say the most satisfying scene I've ever directed is when Molly is with the principal in the office. When she goes in there after they get in the fight. Sorry, you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. But They'll see it. This this will live online forever. What was satisfying about it was that it was really... like So Lola, who plays Molly, was incredible. Like, she's so talented... And she is, she was such a delight to work with. Like she was always had it going. Like it was just, she was so consistent. And then both of us this day, when we were shooting this scene, were having the hardest time making it work. Like Mm. we were both exhausted. I think it was like right in the middle and we couldn't figure out how to make it work. And both of us were just like having a hard time. And she was having a hard time because she had been delivering so consistently, you know? And, and together, like, we, and with Richard Clarkin as well, like, worked it out, like, all working together, working through this, and bouncing off each other and changing things, and Richard being incredibly generous to Lola and, you know, giving her what she needed to go, and, like, That's it was... All you can do is just admit that it's not quite working and... Yeah, and find a way to make it work. So, it was so... Because now I love it. I love the scene, and... But it... It was really satisfying because of how much work it took from all of us to get it to to go, you know? I think that's always better in the end than the things that kind of come easily, you know? Well, you had to work for it. You had to earn it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. So those are my answers to those questions. Mm, okay. So to wrap up... Okay. You have two choices. Okay. You either have to display some kind of talent or you have to arm wrestle me. This is so funny because I was just arm wrestling the other night. <laughs> oh no, she's no. practicing. But I lost. But I, it was all, it's all kind of foggy. That anyway, um, <laughs> I don't have any talents, so, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to arm wrestle. All right, I'm not formally trained okay. by any means, and I've had my my butt whooped, my fair share on here. By who? Oh God, most people. Okay. Most well, Gail. Do you know Gail Harvey? Sounds familiar. She's a, uh, she's a director. She's a Jesus! <laughs> Cheater! <laughs> Cheater. All right, I'll take it. You win. <laughs> you have to cheat to get ahead. Those are my rules. That's what I wanted to tell Fraud. everyone. That's what I want to tell no. everyone on my parting note. Yeah. You have to cheat to get ahead. 
fuck, if I get, fuck, not only fuck the man, but fuck all of you too. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Orange. Yes. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>